There aren't many of us here who remember 48. But everybody knows the story. The Arab world, seven standing armies invaded. A nation brought from the sword, saved from the sword, gathered together, left by our British patrons without weapons. They turned the weapons over to the Arabs. <coughs> there was an embargo on Israel getting any weapons while the Arab armies were being formed by being and the supply by Europe and by Russia and by the United States. <laughs> what would our people say today? I have no hope, we're finished. Come on, what would we say today? Our leaders. What can we do? Maybe we can save something. We fought off seven standing armies. We fought them off a number of times. You remember? Then in 56, remember 56? France and British were scared of the Egyptians. They call on us to do the dirty work, pick out the chestnuts. State of Israel. We did it. And the Americans condemned us. <laughs> but they also condemned the French and the British. Yeah, you remember. In 67, how many of us were here? We remember. All the foreigners were evacuated. The British fleet, the American fleet, the Italian, French, took every foreign citizen because the airplanes couldn't take them. The whole world was waiting for Israel to be wiped off the map. The guarantees of the UN <laughs> just pulled out. <laughs> Guaranteed UN. Yeah, NASA said, leave? They said, for sure. <laughs> they were supposed to protect the state of Israel from just this. They just evaporated. The British and the United States and the French were gathering a fleet to take off the embargo of a lot. We'd still be waiting today. And the six days, miraculous. The whole world just stood amazed. Jewish people, the whole world looked at us. The Jewish people, we defeated Syria. Egypt, Jordan, six days, wow, <coughs> then you're number 73, what a shock, I had my first yeshiva then, not my first, my fourth, <laughs> one before this, oh Samaya. The Jewish people, we rallied. The Arabs attacked us on Yom Kippur. On Yom Kippur, they attacked us. On Yom Kippur, when all the Jews were in shul. Surprise attack. It was the miracle that saved the Jewish people. I was there, I remember. The army came with trucks from shul to shul. And it was the fastest mobilization ever in all human history. Because they knew exactly where the soldiers were. In the Golan Heights on Rosh Hashanah of that year, there were 20,000 civilians who were clogging the roads. 
on Yom Kippur? None. They were able to bring up the artillery and they were able to bring up the tanks, the reserves. And we survived. And we beat them. No question about it, the world had to come running to save the great Egyptian army. What happened to us? Running away from Lebanon. What happened to us? Hezbollah? Hezbollah? The terrorist of seven standing armies? We didn't have any tanks, nothing. No, we got them. What in the world happened to our proud Jewish people? i tell you. We forgot who we are. We forgot why we came. We knew then. We forgot our destiny. I'm asking you to think for a moment. Take the time now to think. Every one of us think. Can you imagine one nation in the whole world that would be bombed one day from a neighboring country that wouldn't immediately go to war? Come on. Can you tell me one nation that bombed for a whole day? For civilians being bombed for a whole day and they wouldn't go to war to protect their people? Seven years! Seven years! Now we don't go to war, what does that mean? Is that the spirit of 48? Is that the spirit of 56 or 67 or even 73? Is that the spirit of Entebbe? Our people are being terrorized for seven years and we don't lift a finger! Ooh. What does it mean? We're betraying our own people? Is there one nation, I'm asking you, think, please think. Is there one nation in the whole world that would be bombed one day, that would go to war, and wouldn't be backed by the whole international community? The whole international community would say, sure, that's what you gotta do. You gotta protect your people. We go to war. <laughs> will be condemned roundly, not only by the UN, not only by the Arabs, not only by NATO, but by the United States. Overreacting. Seven years being bombed, you're overreacting. What does that mean? Please think, what does it mean that we can't defend ourselves? What does it mean? That demanding Jews you don't have a right to life. Die quietly, will you? Don't make too much noise. I'm asking you, can you imagine one nation in the whole world that would be bombed one day that would continue to give their enemy electricity, fuel, water, humanitarian aid? Is there such a nation? I'm asking. Is there? It's, it's unbelievable. It's surrealistic. What does it mean that we continue? Everybody knows that if we cut off their electricity and their fuel and their water and their supplies, everybody knows that the Hamas would be thrown out in two weeks, a month, two months. Come on! What does it mean that we don't do it? That means we're afraid of world opinion? Jewish blood, a world opinion? Who are we? And then the Attorney General in the human, the Supreme Court says that it's, it's, Forbidden to cut off the electricity. Seven years, people are living in terror. Terror. People are 
getting killed. You can't do anything about it. You can't do anything. You can't cut off the electricity. That's not humanitarian. Hey, man, who taught this world about being our brother's keepers? Who taught this world about charity? Who taught the whole bloody world about the dignity of the individual? Who taught the whole world about justice for all? About the brotherhood of man? About peace on earth? Who did it if not the Jewish people? And the Jewish people says when you gotta defend your people, you defend them. What we've got to do is we've got to wake up our people. Remember 48? We have nothing to be afraid of. 56, 67, even 73. If we're proud, if we know who we are, if we know our destiny, the world needs us. <laughs> we have nothing to be afraid of.